praise God. What's up, beloved uh, family? This is the day that the Lord has made, and I'm glad that you're here. I'm glad to be sharing this work with you. This is the last Sunday of the month of August, and we're coming to bring closure to our mini series, which was the upside of progress. Throughout this month, we've been talking about how you focus on the highlights and keeping a positive mindset as you continue your momentum. This month was all, was all about encouraging you to maintain your momentum as you make progress. So I'll be wrapping it up today as we talk about flourishing, how God's sovereignty enables you to flourish. So what I want you to do right now is I want you to check out this mini movie, which is about strength and how God's strength is made perfect in your weakness. And then I'll be right back to encourage you in the message for today, flourishing. So praise God. Um, This is that day, right? The day that God has made and that movie encourages us to be strengthened by God, to lean on God, to depend on God and let God's strength uplift you. Let God's strength encourage you. Let God's strength give you the necessary power that you need to keep your momentum in your progress, progressive journey. So we want you to maintain your momentum. We want you to keep it going. Amen. And we talk about the upside of progress. Amen. And so last week I shared with you how the sovereignty of God does not absolve you and I of our responsibilities. Amen. And so today I want to continue that because last week I talked about two aspects, which are our responsibilities. The first one was fearless. And then the second was faithful. Today we're going to talk about flourishing. So right after this prayer, we're going to get into today's message. Let's pray. Father, I thank you today for this opportunity to share your word with your people. I thank you today, Father God, that you will open the eyes of our hearts, that they'll be open so we can receive revelation, knowledge and spiritual understanding. Father, I pray that we'll be able to take what you give us and apply it to our everyday lives in a very practical way that'll make a difference, that'll add value. So, Father, we just give you praise. We give you glory for that in Jesus name. And Father, I thank you for continually just showing up. Amen. So right now, I know you're going to show up wherever someone is viewing this, that you're going to show up and show out. Father, I know you're going to do that. I believe that. And Father, I know your word is powerful and it's quick. Hallelujah. And it's going to bring us into enlightenment because at the entrance of your word, there is enlightenment. So I thank you. I praise you. I pray for those who are believers and those who are unbelievers, that they will come to know you and your son, Jesus Christ. It is in Jesus Christ's name we pray and decree and declare that it is so. And so it is. Amen. So 2024, the year of progress. And if you've been keeping abreast of things that are going on in the world and uh, specifically, you know, this week, they had the Democratic National Convention and you just kept hearing that word. I kept hearing the word progress. I kept hearing the word moving forward. I kept hearing the word momentum. And uh, just what that feels like and what that was like for that convention and those convention goers. I want you to remember, beloved, that God is vested in you and he wants you to progress. So we declare that this is the year of progress and progress is defined as measure, sustain, forward movement in the right direction. And that's so important that you understand that God wants you to move in the right direction. And this month of August, we've been talking about the upside of progress, highlighting the momentum and the positive aspects of moving forward, moving on, moving past, moving up and watch this, 
moving towards that goal, that goal, that vision that you have under the sovereignty of God. We declared on the first Sunday of this month that the sovereignty of God is the upside of progress, that God's supreme power, God's supreme rule, God's supreme control is the upside of your progress. And when we acknowledge that, that God is large and in charge, that God loves us and that God's power, his supreme power has no equal, has no match. And when you focus on the sovereignty of God and God being sovereign, that should free you as a believer up from worry, uh, from anxiety, from fear. So you begin to trust God. You begin to trust his character, trust his nature, trust his consistency, trust his faithfulness, that God is sovereign and he is supreme in rule and in power, and his supreme rule and power is on your behalf. Amen. And so when you rest on that sovereignty of God, when you realize the sovereignty of God, it should encourage you to fling off fear, to throw and kick, you know, worry out of the door and begin to just focus and say, you know, God's got this. But now building upon that thought, I stated last week and I want to reemphasize this week that when we build upon the thought that God is sovereign, right? And that he's all powerful and he has supreme power, and supreme control. There is an underlying misconception that I wanted to address last week as well as this week. And that underlying misconception is that you and I are absolved of our responsibility because God's got this. Have you ever heard anybody say that? Well, God's got it. So I don't have to worry about it. Yes. You don't have to worry about it, but you don't have. But that doesn't mean that you don't do things about what you're facing. It doesn't mean that you don't that you're not. It, it means that you're not fretful, but it doesn't mean you get to sit back and do nothing. You have to trust God. You have to stay in faith and staying in faith is your responsibility. I said staying in faith is your responsibility. Now, when we talk about the sovereignty of God, I want you to think with me this week how God's sovereignty is our opportunity for flourishing. God's sovereignty is our opportunity to flourish, to live a dynamic life, to live a great life. If you recall the illustration, the example I used last week was about the USA uh, men's and women's Olympic gold team and, and how they won the gold medals and both teams played France. And one of the quotes that I mentioned last week the coach said that once they put the male team out there on the court, that they saw a couple of things. One, they saw that these men cared. They saw they saw that they cared. And then they saw that they realized that they have a responsibility to excel, to play at a higher dimension, a higher level. And then the third thing they realized was that they, hallelujah, watch this, check this out, that they could exceed the greatness that was in them that they can go beyond that, that they can do things at a different level, at a higher level. So I liken that unto us, because when you think about what God has done for you, pause right now and think about what God has done for you, the doors that God has opened, the ways that God has moved in your life, the doors that God has closed, the advantages that God has given you, the mercy and the faithfulness that God has demonstrated and shown in your life, the grace and the favor that God has poured upon your life. It should compel you and I to watch this, assume the responsibility that we have called upon God to live at a higher level, to live life on another dimension, to rise above our, our situations, to rise above our circumstances and to live above the problems that we face in life so that we can watch this maintain our momentum. So it's about flourishing. And now while we know this is God's will, saints of God, it's important that we understand what our responsibility is. See, the misconception is that we don't have to do anything, that our responsibility, that we've been absolved of our responsibility to do anything. Now, this is an era. And the truth is, watch this, beloved. All the way back to Adam and Eve, humanity has struggled with accepting responsibility. There is a great misconception among believers that because God is sovereign, therefore we have no responsibility. This is actually a great error. And God's sovereignty does not make or does not absolve us of responsibility. 
It affords us the opportunity to be great. And so the key principle that I want to drive home today and leave you with is this. The sovereign work of God in us, for us, around us, hallelujah, does not replace our working. In fact, it should energize our working. I'm going to say it again. The sovereign work of God, the supreme powerful work of God, hallelujah, the supreme rule of God in us, around us, and for us, does not replace our responsibility. It should energize our working. Amen? So let's get into it. My first life work principle for today is God's sovereign work in us. Watch this. Philippians 1, 6 says, in the Amplified Versions, he says, I am convinced and confident of of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will continue to perfect and complete it until the day of Christ Jesus, the time of his return. The Apostle Paul, sitting in a Philippian jail, writes this to the church of Philippi. He says, you know, God's grace and peace be upon you. And he says, I'm a bond servant of God. He says, I I, I just want to encourage you. And he says, I am convinced, watch this, and confident that of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will be faithful to complete it, to perfect it, and do it all the way until the day of Jesus Christ or the second return of Jesus Christ. The first life work principle is God's sovereign work in us. See, the word of the Lord says that Paul says that he has this confidence, he has this faith, he has this belief, he has this assurance. He is thinking of this and he's convinced of this and he's confident in this. And and you've got to be confident. If you're going to maintain momentum, if you're going to accept the responsibility to continue to move forward along your progressive journey, then you're going to have to have faith. And Paul says, I have faith. Faith in what? Paul says, I am confident that God is working in you. Saints of God, I too, like Paul, believe that God is working in us. I believe that the sovereign God, the the, the supreme ruler, the supreme architect of everything that goes on in life and in our world as believers, that God is at work. I see the sovereign hand of God. I see the powerful hand of God at work in my life. Do you see it? Do you see God's hand working in your life? Do you see God's sovereign rule and God's sovereign power working on your behalf, around you, in you, and watch this, for you? Paul says, I see this and I'm convinced that he who has begun a good work. So God began the work. God begun the work in you. Amen. God started it. Hallelujah. God started this good work in you. Hallelujah. And it starts on the inside. He didn't start on the outside. He started on the inside. And that's where your momentum is going to come from. That's where your strength is going to come from. That's where your perseverance is going to come from. That's where your get back up is going to come from. That's where your want to is going to come from. That's yes, your want to. You got to want to to progress. You got to want to get back up. And it's going to come from the inside. So the Bible says that God is faithful. He's working in you and he's going to complete that work perfect that work. and He's going to keep on working until Christ comes back. So right now, if you know, hallelujah, if you remember what the scripture is saying, you will realize that God is at work in you. That God's sovereign hand is moving in your life. That God's sovereign touch, that God's sovereign look, that God's sovereign correction. Yeah, sometimes the work of God that he's doing is a correcting work. Amen. Sometimes it's a hard work. Hallelujah. Because sometimes we can be stubborn, but God is still faithful and he's working on us and he's working on our behalf. Come on, decree this with me. God is working on my behalf. Hallelujah. God is doing a sovereign work in me. Hallelujah. God is doing a a great work in me. Hallelujah. Who can attest to that? That God is doing a great work in you. You're not what you used to be. You're not what you're going to be, but thank God you're not what you used to be. Why is that? Because God is at work in you. He's working things out in your life. He's bringing you through. He's bringing you over. He's bringing you around. Amen. So the sovereign work of God is in your life. Amen. Though many try to stop it, many try to block it. Sometimes we are our own worst enemy. Sometimes we get in our own way. But God's sovereign work, hallelujah, is working on our behalf. Amen. So that's life work principle number one. Life work principle number two is 
Flourishing because of God's sovereign work in us. Flourishing because of God's sovereign work in us. So God is working in you. The sovereign, supreme uh, ruler, supreme power, absolute power, large and in control. He's working in your life. He's working on your behalf. He's working for you. He's working around you in his sovereignty, in his supreme power. But why is he doing that? I'm glad you asked. He's doing that so that you can flourish. God is vested in you. The upside of progress is the sovereignty of God. And here it is. Why is God being sovereign in your life? Because number one, he is sovereign. Number two is because he's vested in you. God is vested in your flourishing. God wants to see all of humanity flourish. God wants to see you flourish. God wants to see you lead a successful life. God wants to see you lead a productive life. And beloved, I'm here to tell you today through the scripture, amen, that God's sovereign power is why you can flourish. God's sovereign work in you is why you can flourish. Watch this. Second Peter chapter one, beginning at verse three. For the Bible says, for his divine power, his sovereign work, his sovereign supreme power, his grace has been bestowed on us Absolutely everything. His divine power has bestowed on us absolutely everything necessary for a dynamic spiritual life and godliness. Comma, pause right there. God's power has been bestowed on you and has bestowed on you everything necessary, everything that you need to live a dynamic spiritual life. We're going to come back to that. Through true and personal knowledge of him, who called us by his own glory and excellence. Verse four, for by these, he has bestowed on us his precious and magnificent promises of inexpressible value so that they, so that by them, you may escape from the immoral freedom that is in the world because of disruptible desires, disruptible desires and become sharers of the divine nature. For this very reason, Applying your diligence to the divine promises, make every effort exercising your faith to develop. For as these qualities are yours and are increasing in you as you grow toward spiritual maturity, they will keep you from being useless and unproductive in regard to the true knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Beloved, here it is. Therefore, believers, be all the more diligent to make certain about his calling and choosing you. Be sure that your behavior reflects and confirm your relationship with God. So let's break it down. Family, flourishing because of God's sovereignty, because of the sovereign work of God. Well, the word of the Lord said in that third verse, for his divine power, his grace, his sovereignty, that work that he's begun in you, that work that he's doing for you, that work that he's doing around you, that sovereign work, that power, hallelujah, that grace has bestowed on you. Watch this, everything you need, absolutely everything you need is on the inside of you. Hallelujah. Everything you need to do this great work, to live, watch this, a spiritually dynamic life, to live a life that is flourishing. Do you know... For a spiritual life and godliness. Do you know what that looks like? Saints of God, that looks like flourishing. That God has put things inside of you, everything you need inside of you, so that you can flourish. So that you can be all that you were designed to be. So that you can be and become all that you, hallelujah, he called you to be and all that he wants you to be. Amen. So that when you, hallelujah, set your heart and your mind to do a thing, that God is going to cause you to flourish because he's placed something on the inside of you. He wants you to live a spiritually dynamic life. How many understand what that means? That means that saints of God, you're going to live in such a way, spiritually dynamic means that you're going to live in such a way that you're going to be progressively successful in your living. Do you want that? Do you want to live to where you're progressively changing and adjusting and growing and maturing to where you are successful in your life, successful in your endeavors, successful in the thing that God has called you to do? Do you want to live with purpose? 
Hallelujah. And so God says, I want you to live with purpose. Therefore, I've placed in you everything that you need so that you can live with purpose, so that you can live a spiritually dynamic life, so that you don't have to live a life that is unproductive and useless, the scripture said. Peter is writing this and Peter knows about this very intimately because, you know, Peter, Peter, saints of God, if you recall, God, Jesus Christ came and told him, I'm changing your name. He says, I'm from here on out. You're going to be called Peter, Petros, a rock. He says before you were a pebble, but now you're going, hallelujah, to be called a rock. And that says, lets us know that God recognized the potential that was in Peter. And I say to you, hallelujah, you got the same grace on you. I'm going to say it again. You got the same grace on you. See, the same grace that was on Peter is on you. And this is what Peter is trying to tell us. He says, God's divine power. That's the grace, the same grace that was on Peter, that when he went through his time of sifting, hallelujah, did not change his destination that Jesus Christ had for him. Hallelujah, that he was going to be strengthened. He was going to convert his brothers. So this Peter is talking to us right now to encourage you and encourage me to let us know that same grace that was on his life is on your life because God's divine power has made it so. God has given you everything you need. Say, I got it. Hallelujah. I got it on the inside of me. Everything you need to live a spiritual dynamic life. So this is not a life that is humdrum. This is not a life that you're just going through the motions. This is a life where you get up every day and you live, hallelujah, in such a way that you are consciously aware that there is, watch this, a plan for your life and that God wants you to flourish in it. God wants you to flourish in that purpose. God wants you to flourish as a parent. God wants you to flourish as a young person in school. God wants you to flourish, hallelujah, as a husband or a spouse, a wife. God wants you to flourish as a single person. And so God has given you everything you need. Hallelujah. And then he's given you, watch this, he wasn't through. He said, I've given you great and precious promises too. So I've placed grace inside you. Hallelujah. I've placed everything you need inside you to live a godly life, to live a spiritual dynamic dynamic life. But then also I've given you promises. Hallelujah. And you know the promises of God are yes and it is so. It's yes and amen in Christ Jesus. So every promise that God makes in the Bible finds its yes. Hallelujah. And it is so in Jesus Christ. So when you look at the promises of God, God says that through these promises, you will be able to escape the corruption that is in the world through lust and become a divine partaker of the nature of God, the divine nature of God. Saints of God, that means that you move to the God class. When you're able to become a partaker of the divine nature of God, that means God has shifted your status. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. But what you have to do, watch this, your responsibility is to believe the promises of God. Exercise your faith in the promises of God, that through the promises of God, that you can trust the promises of God, that you can lean and depend on Jesus Christ and the fulfillment of those promises in your life and begin to believe for the manifestation of those promises coming in your life. Now, those promises are not going to manifest in your life without faith and faith's corresponding actions. Faith without works is dead. So there must be faith and there must be corresponding actions of faith. You're going to have to walk by faith. You have to talk by faith. You got to believe by faith. Amen. You got to believe for it. And so you use the promises of God. Hallelujah. Giving diligence to them. That means saints of God, you're going to have to have a get up and go about it. You're going to have to be determined. You got to be diligent about it. You're going to have to watch this. Be earnest about it. Amen. You have to be determined that you're going to do this. Amen. And it's not a one and off. It has to be a daily hallelujah commitment on your part a discipline on your part, dare I say, to live by the promises of God. That when you face something in life that may be an obstruction to your progress, God wants you to maintain your momentum by realizing, number one, that he is sovereign. Realizing that his sovereign work in your life is causing you to be equipped with everything you need. Number two, his sovereign work in your life causes you to flourish. Number one, God is doing a sovereign work in your life, a great work in your life. Number two, his sovereignty causes you to flourish. So what you have to do and I have to do is be diligent. Be responsible. Commit yourself to doing the work that God has called you to do on you. Commit yourself. 
Walk by faith and grab hold to one of the promises of God and then back it up with corresponding actions. And begin to, you know, to the point that your belief and your behavior correspond. Your belief and your behavior are lined up. That whatever you believe, you're behaving according to what you believe. Amen. There's not a cognitive dissonance in your life that you are believing and you are behaving according to what you believe. So there is this consistency in your life. It's called the faith walk. It's called this flourishing in your life that you are now, saints of God, corresponding in such a way and living in such a way that your life reflects the relationship and the calling on your life that you have with Jesus Christ. Beloved, I encourage you today that God is committed to your flourishing. God wants you to live a spiritually dynamic life. God wants you to rise above every situation and circumstance that will come your way. God wants you to, hallelujah, recognize what he's deposited in you through his sovereign work. And then number two, God wants you to commit yourself and say, you know what? I can live at a higher level. I can accept that responsibility. And I believe that I can exceed and I can be great. I can excel. Why? Because God has given me a promise. Not just one, not just two, but he's given us these great amount of promises and they are precious. And all you have to do is believe them and then have the corresponding works. So he says, go ahead and be diligent. Add to your faith this, add to this and add to that. So you got to use your faith and you have to be diligent in this. You have to be disciplined in this. You have to be committed in this. And when you do, God says you'll live this dynamic life in such a way that you will not be useless or unproductive. Are you unproductive? Do you feel like what you're doing doesn't matter? God says you can shift that. You can change that today. Listen to me. You can change it. You can stop. Hallelujah. Feeling like you're not producing anything, like you're not making a difference. By what? How? By committing yourself to utilizing your faith in the promises of God, backing it up with corresponding actions. It is so, and so it is in Jesus' name. Let's pray. Father, I thank you today for your word is true. Your word is powerful. And I thank you today for your sovereign work inside of every believer and your sovereign work on behalf of humanity. And I do pray today in Jesus' name that those who know you, those who have accepted your son, Jesus, as their personal savior will begin to activate their faith, to begin to live life at a higher level, to begin to flourish. And those that do not know you have not accepted your son, that they will come today and accept your son, Jesus Christ, that wherever they are, that they will accept you and accept your son and believe today that greater things are ahead of them. Greater things are in store for them. You want them to flourish. It's in Jesus Christ's name we pray and decree that it is so. And so it is. Well, beloved, listen, if you prayed that prayer with me and you believe that God is speaking to you, calling you, wanting you to connect, we here at New Beginnings Community Church Worldwide want to connect you to Christ, to his church and to his commission, which is ministry. We just want to get you connected. So if you will follow the information on your screen, we'll respond back to you and get you connected. I thank God for those who have been responding all year. Thank you for reaching out to us. And I pray that you're feeling the connection as we're reaching back out to you. And I pray that you're going to grow in grace and the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, secondly, I want to invite you to who I have given. I want to say thank you. Thank you for giving. Thank you for sowing. Thank you for being a covenant partner, a believer, throwing, sowing into this ministry, seeding into this ministry so we can continue to do what we do. Come on air. Uh, minister to people both locally and globally all around the world. Today and right now is our giving time. Follow that information on the screen. Amen and give. Amen. And we thank God for you. And we're praying that God will continue to bless you in your storehouses. In Jesus name, I speak abundance over you. In Jesus name, I speak hallelujah. That hallelujah, July through December will be greater than January through June. I speak that over your life in Jesus name. I speak momentum over you in Jesus name. It is so. And so it is. Well, listen, beloved, that's my time. I pray today that if you go back and listen to this message, as well as the three others about the upside of progress, that you recognize that the sovereignty of God is the progress. It is the upside of progress. The sovereignty of God, the supreme power, supreme ruler, God himself, his sovereignty is the upside of progress. And that you recognize and realize that you have a responsibility 
to progress. Until next week, God bless you. It is so, and so it is.